just have no bad words to say about this pattern at all, um, except that I'm sweating like a maniac. I'm Kristen, also known as Bull and Vine, here on my YouTube channel, on Instagram, on Ravelry, pretty much everywhere else on the interwebs. <laughs> and as always, I'm so happy that you're taking some time out of your day to chat about all the knitting, all the sewing, all the making, or whatever crafty rabbit hole I happen to be diving down this week. And I am back again, yet again, from another two-week hiatus. So thank you, thank you so much uh, for bearing with me and returning. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. If you're a new viewer, welcome to my my humble abode on the YouTubes. Uh, I hope you enjoy. Uh, but yes, uh, I've, I've missed recording. I, I'm wondering if I remember how to do this. Let's let's see, shall we? I have lots to catch you up on. Clearly, after two weeks, I have I should have something to show for. So. I hope you guys are excited. Um, grab a cup of something and uh, hunker down because I've got stuff to share. But anyway, uh, just a couple of housekeeping notes before I get into all that. Uh, we have ended the Uncomfort Zone Cal, so big congrats again to all the winners. I have sent out their giveaway prizes and they've received them and I've unlocked the thread in the Vullen Vine Ravelry group. So if you still wanna partake in uh, challenging yourself to broaden your knitting horizons or making horizons, what have you. Uh, the thread is now open to share all your projects and just chatter away. And again, it's just lively. It's just hopping with conversation as ever. So uh, definitely hop on over there uh, and join the group if you haven't already, because yeah, that is the place to be if you want to join in on any of our make-alongs uh, that are happening on the podcast or blog, however you want to refer to this little spot on the web. Um, but yeah, so now we have the Box O Socks Knit Along that is running until January 1st, 2020. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be 2020, crazy sauce. Uh, and then we also have Year of the Garment, uh, which is also a year long knit along that's running until January 1st, 2020. So plenty of time to hop in on that and uh, very, very casual knit alongs. All the guidelines are over in the Villain Vine Ravelry group. So definitely check that out. And I am gonna be announcing a new make along uh, throughout the podcast. So stay tuned for that. I'm kind of excited about it. I don't know, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. But anyway, stay tuned. And one last thing that I want to touch on before I get into what I've been making this week uh, is re in regards to my Clara socks, a pattern that I've been working on and uh, have shared with you on the podcast and on my social media feeds. Uh, however, when I was away, it was brought to my attention that there's already a pattern out there with very striking similarities. Uh, and as soon as I, I saw and acknowledged the similarities, I realized there was no way I could continue uh, to work on the pattern and publish. Uh, so therefore I will not be publishing the Clara socks, unfortunately. I'm just grateful that it was brought to my attention that there was <laughs> that there was a very similar pattern out there before I hit publish. Anyway, thank you, thank you for listening. And uh, let's let's get into some let's get into some making, shall we? Um, uh, but first, just a quick word for my wonderful and amazing sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, business, tech, and more, even sewing in the fiber arts. I love learning new things when it comes to knitting, sewing, photography, or whatever crafty rabbit hole I happen to be diving down. And because I know you love learning new things too, I partnered up with Skillshare and they are offering my viewers two months free to try their platform. So give Skillshare a go and learn something new. Just click on the link in the description box below, entering the code at checkout, and enjoy. And thanks, Skillshare. And welcome back. All right, uh, we have a finished object this week, my friends. Yay! Oh my goodness. When was the last time I had a finished object? <laughs> Birds of a feather. I want to say this was like over two months ago now, was it? Or was it a month? I don't know. I lose track of these things. But anyway, I finished my love note sweater, you guys. It is done. It is done. And I am so freaking in love with this thing, guys. It is a pattern by Tin Can Knits. Um, and I guess I will try it on for you. Although it's, by this try on is going to be very, very brief because it is sweltering in here. Uh, and the yarn is My Hand Dyed Yarn, Volenfine Yarns, uh, holding two strands of Nouveau, my single ply Superwash Merino, and Ghost Lace, uh, which is a lace weight, uh, silk and mohair blend, uh, holding those two strands together using a US 10 needle. I'm not sure what that is in millimeters, uh, but yes, US size 10, I did not swatch and I lucked out. I just, I totally winged it, guys. Um, 
Yeah, so this is, uh, and again, the yarn is, the colorway is my Bronte colorway inspired by the Bronte sisters, um, whose novels I love. Um, I'm still working my way through um, Charlotte Bronte's, and I just started listening to Wuthering Heights on audiobook, but anyway, I digress. This sweater is just, I, I have, I have nothing bad to say about this pattern. It is just, it was just so quick to knit up, so wonderful and relaxing. Um, it has this really beautiful lace leafy motif going throughout the yoke. And I literally knit this, uh, knit the yoke in two nights and the rest of the body I knit while I was in Cape Cod. Um, and it's a crop top and it has this kind of short row shaping in the back to give it a little dip in the back, which I really, really love. Um, I made the sleeves longer um, I just kept knitting and knitting and then knit, I knit a longer cuff, three inches for the cuff. Um, I know the pattern says to knit about 10 inches for the size that I knit. Uh, but yeah, I of course love longer sleeves in the winter. Right now I'm sweating bullets in it. So <laughs> this will not last long on me for the rest of the podcast, but I just wanted to show it to you guys. It's blocked. Um, although I do have a little a little um, stitch marker here because I did drop a stitch and I have to secure that at some point, but it's blocked. I just have to photograph it, get it up on Ravelry and Bob's your uncle. Um, and I will have more of this colorway and yarn in the shop, not this week, but the following week, um, just the way the schedule worked out and everything, but um, it will be in the shop again soon. So if you, again, I'll talk about um, shop update stuff later in the episode, but do sign up for my newsletter because that's where you can find out what exactly will be in every update. But uh, yeah, Love Note, Love Note by Tin Can Knits. Awesome pattern, highly recommend it, especially for beginners. Uh, this was a no brainer, uh, honestly, like this stitch, this lace motif right here, so good. I could easily knit myself another one in like a fortnight or go figure, who knows? But um, I could totally see myself knitting up another one in another color. So um, yeah, love note, love it. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm gonna take it off now because I can't even think in it. It's it's crazy sauce how hot it is. I do have another hoe in my flu punta pouch and that is a sock. I This was just a random cast on that I wanted to work on while I was away in Cape Cod. This was perfect beach knitting, something that I didn't have to pay too much attention to. Um, but yeah, I cast on a pair of Felici socks, guys. Uh, the yarn is Felici, and there, which is uh, Knit Picks uh, self-striping yarn. And this was actually a gift from my friend Nina, who is Ine. She has the This Old Knit podcast. Totally check it out. Um, but yeah, I finally dug into this skein. And here is sock number one. It is done. and. It is, it is essentially goth kitty incarnate. Yeah, it is these colors, guys. It's just so awesome. I love it. So um, I have one more skein left, which I haven't dug into, but I got the cuff. Ooh, stitches down, stitches down. But I have one cuff going, so now I just have to start the rest of the sock. Um, and I'm using, uh, so I'm doing magic loop on US 1.5, 2.5 millimeter needles, which is my go-to sock knitting needle of choice. Um, and yeah, that that is my hoe for the week. I, I don't know what else to say. Um, I'm gonna try and make these match as much as possible because in the past when I knit self-striping socks, I usually kind of throw caution to the wind and just knit knit them all willy-nilly even if the, even though they don't match. But I'm gonna try my hardest to make these socks match. So um, yeah, but they are just one by one rib, uh, plain stockinette in the round, and then I did fish lips kiss heel and then a kitchener stitch toe. So one sock for you. Hopefully I'll have something to show for next week on the second sock. No second sock syndrome here, guys. No second sock syndrome here. As long as I cast on the, the second sock immediately after finishing the first sock, usually I don't have a problem with that. But um, yeah, we shall see. We shall see. Next up is a new cast on. Uh, and again, first I want to say a little disclaimer. I have not forgotten about my Soldotna crop top by Caitlin Hunter. I am in love with that thing and I will have that thing ready by Rhinebeck. So so help me. Um, yeah, the, the only reason why that is taking as long as it's taking is because I'm on Sleeve Island and the whole sleeve is just color work. And I really brought this upon myself, my friends. It is, it's a crop, you know, the, the original pattern is just a crop top with short sleeves, but I have to be the special snowflake that needs the, <laughs> needs the extra long sleeves on the longer body. So, you know, it's, it's, 
I, I asked for it basically. I'm a glutton for punishment. Um, but I will be, I have, I'm just about done with the first sleeve, so I just have to knit the second sleeve and we'll all be done. But in the meantime, I realized how lacking my wardrobe is in a black long cardigan. I've been craving a black long hand knit cardigan for eons, and I started browsing Ravelry for one and I stumbled on the Mazzy cardigan by uh, Elizabeth Smith. And I've had the Mazzy cardigan uh, in my queue for quite some time. I think as soon as it was published, I added it, but um, I never got around to knitting it. And as soon as I saw it, I'm like, yes, I want that cardigan. And then the first yarn that came to mind, <laughs> please don't kill me, um, was Dennis's, uh, was the yarn that I'm using to knit Dennis's sweater, uh, which is Brooklyn Tweed, uh, Shelter in there. What is it? Oh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Get it back. Here we go. Um, cast iron colorway. So Brooklyn Tweed, you're all familiar with Brooklyn Tweed. I don't have to hold this up, but, um, yeah, I, if you, if you've been following the podcast, you know that I've at several points, at a few points I've tried casting Dennis on a sweater and I've never completed any of them. Um, and I, I want to say about a year ago, I was determined. I was like, I'm going to knit him a sweater. He's going to get a sweater. And it just, it's not happening guys. I can't, I can't knit for others. I mean, sure. Socks, hats, tiny accessories, by all means, if you're knit worthy, you'll get a pair of socks. You'll get a hat. You'll get some mittens for me, but something as big as a sweater, I don't, I don't think I'm that person. I'm not that knitter. So I'm just going to be totally honest with him and be like, you're not, I'll talk about this more in sewing, but I don't, I don't think I'm going to finish this sweater brand <laughs> because I poached the yarn for my own cardigan. Um, yeah, I'm a terrible wife. I'm awful. Um, he's not watching this, but I am going to make it up to him. I am going to make it up to him. I'll talk about, I'll talk more about that in sewing, but, um, yeah, I've poached the yarn from his, from his sweater and I'm knitting a Mazzy. I'm knitting a Mazzy cardigan out of it, and oh my gosh, you guys, this this cardigan, I'm so in love already. I can't get enough of it, um, and it's, this is going to be like the biggest, well, I knit the stone cutter by Michelle Wong. That was a huge undertaking, but um, this is a very, that had elaborate cables and everything to it, and um, you know, whatever, that was a challenge. This is a challenge in that it's a long cardigan, so it's just, you know, it has a very simple... This is dark yarn. You're not even going to be able to really see it, but I'll do my best to show you. Um, yeah, it has a mock cable twist motif along the collar. There's no buttons. It's meant to be worn open, but it has pockets, um, which I've already installed. So you can see it here. There's like a little bit of ribbing and the pockets are going to go in there. And then basically they're just like a flap on the wrong side. So once the sweater is all, once the cardigan is all done, I'm just going to, I'm assuming that I'm going to go back and tack it down with like a mattress stitch or, you know, whip stitch to secure them in place. Um, but again, this is just such a relaxing knit. I've just been working on it a little bit every night and I'm making a lot of progress on it guys. Um, and again, this is Brooklyn Tweed Shelter and worsted weight yarn. So it's knitting up fairly quickly. Um, and just a really lovely pattern to work on at the end of the, at the end of each day. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, working my way through it. I did knit a, well, Dennis's sweater was the swatch. <laughs> the, um, the pattern actually calls for a US 7, which I'm not, it's 4.5 millimeter. It's on there. Um, so yeah, I basically used Dennis's sweater as the swatch and I, you know, it was gauge. So I just cast this on because the, the cardigan also called for a US I 7. Um, so yeah, there you go. Here we are. Uh, we have a cardigan on the go and I am so in love with this. This is going to get so much wear and you know, I hope, I hope it gets a lot of wear. Um, so yeah, and that's where I am going to be talking about my new, my new make along that I'm going to be hosting. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Um, I'm calling it the practical, but practical instead of a C, practical with a K-A-L. I know this is nothing new. There are, I've seen some hashtags with practical on it, or there have been knit-alongs that have been, I, I guess, like surrounded around this hashtag or what have you. Um, but the idea is to, to start making practical things. So in the past, when I gravitate towards a sewing or knitting pattern, I usually gravitate towards something that is, you know, just more for like special occasions or events or whatever. I, I, my wardrobe is seriously lacking in things, in practical things, things that I wear for work, things that I just want to throw on every day. Uh, and you know, while I would love the idea to 
waltz or swan around in my house in a tutu and um, elaborate cabled cardigan, that's just not practical for dyeing yarn in and or just going to the grocery store. Of course, you know, there's nothing wrong with going to the grocery store in a tutu. Um, I've done it before in the past. I can do it again, sure. Um, but anyway, you know, just for those days where I just don't feel like putting a lot of effort into my appearance. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. So I am officially on a quest to just add things to my wardrobe that are practical. So hence the practical, or shall we call it the practimal? as in make along, because you can either knit, you can sew, you can make anything that is going to be practical for your handmade wardrobe. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I think I want to make this a three or four month long knit along, um, or, you know, maybe a six month make along knit along, just a, an ongoing make along. Um, I don't know, how long should this be? Should we just challenge ourselves for three months uh, to make as many things that we can to be practical for our handmade wardrobe? I'll think, I'll, I, I'm really just coming up with this on the spot, so I'll think this through a little bit more, but I definitely want to host this make-along. Um, so the Mazzy cardigan is definitely going to be counted towards the, the make-along. Um, and then I also want to make something from this book, which I shared on the podcast a while back. It's Knit and Sew Uniform. Um, and it's published by Matter in Maine. I think these are the people behind Making Magazine, uh, but it has a knit cardigan pattern by, by Matter. Uh, and a tunic sewing pattern by Grainline Studio. So this is a great place to start, I think, if you're looking for inspiration. Um, and I think Grainline Studio recently released their the uniform tunic uh, on their website as a PDF download. So that's really awesome. But this is a really great book. Um, even the cardigan in here, I, I had cast on the cardigan a while back, but I was using the wrong type of yarn. So anyway, long story short, I'll, you know, I had to frog it and I'm going to revisit the cardigan in this pattern, in this uh, book. Um, when I find when I do find the right yarn um, to go with it, but anyway, uh, let me know what you guys think. I'm I'm super excited for a new knit along um, or make along. Um, so yeah, all right. On to I think I think that is it for whips and fos when it comes to when it comes to knitting. So I am gonna move along to sewing. All right. As for sewing, I am again wearing something that you cannot see on camera yet. So I will stand up. Um, but this is my second Brumby skirt, a wonderful pattern by Megan Nielsen. Uh, and let me step back so you can see. Yeah, I'll pop, I'll pop a photo in the side so you can see what this looks like in all its glory. But it has these really lovely scooped pockets. The one thing I will say about these pockets is they're, I mean, they are functional, but they're too long. Like when I put my hands in my pockets, I kind of want my knuckles to hit something so they have a place to rest and these just kind of hang there. So <laughs> I don't know, that's a little annoying to me, but they still look really cool and I love them. Um, so this fabric is crepe de chine, which uh, I'm totally blanking on the fiber content, but yeah, there is nylon in there. Um, but yeah, it's very drapey, it's very flowy, uh, and it's great for this pattern. It has a top stitching detail down the center, and it has an exposed zip in the back. So I thought that was a really fun detail. Um, this is a jean zip, so it's got its metal and um, the pattern actually has, you know, directions for an exposed zipper, but it also says that um, you can incorporate any type of zip that you want, be it an, a lap zip, an invisible zip, what have you. But um, I am also really excited because I'm currently working on a sew along video for, or series I should say at this point, uh, for this pattern. And the first part is already up on YouTube. I'll pop a link to it in the doobly-doo up here. Um, and I was hoping to have it as one, one standalone video, but I've never filmed or recorded a sew along before. And my gosh, you guys, there is so much work that goes into it. Um, lots, lots of cuts, lots of takes, lots of angles and everything, but uh, it was a fun process, but I did not realize how long it would take me to edit. So those of you out there who have done these sew along, who have made your own sew along videos, kudos to you. It's a lot of work and um, yeah, I respect my friends. Um, so yeah, I've broken it up into hopefully just two parts. I have to finish editing it the rest over the weekend or whatever. Um, so I apologize if you've been waiting and hanging around for me to upload these videos, <laughs> but um, the first one's up there, so hopefully that should get you started. Um, but yeah, you guys have just been super excited for this sew along and it makes me so happy. Um, 
it might be a lot of work for me, but I'm just having so much fun sharing what I know with you guys and, you know, just spreading the excitement about sewing. And if I can get someone, if I can get another person sewing, just one more person sewing. Anytime someone tells me that I've inspired them to sew or even knit or try a new technique, it just makes me so happy. But if you're nervous or hesitant to get into sewing because you think, you know, oh, it's too hard or I don't know what I'm doing or whatever, I just, I highly encourage you to just give it a try. It doesn't even have to be the Brumby skirt. It could be any skirt. There are a lot of, um, easy, simple skirt patterns out there that I will, I will actually link some in the down bar below uh, for you guys to check out. Um, some that are even simpler than the Brumby skirt because there are just so many incredible techniques that you can glean from just one skirt pattern. It's, it's, it's amazing. So I don't know. I just encourage you to at least give it a try. If you don't like it, say lovey. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, poor Dennis is not getting a knit sweater for me in the near future. So I'm going to make it up to him by sewing him a, a hoodie. I don't think he's watching this podcast. He doesn't really watch my podcast because he has no idea what I'm talking about when I talk about sewing or knitting. So I don't blame him. But anyway, um, Here's some black uh, sweatshirt fabric. Uh, I am actually, I pre-washed it. It came in the mail yesterday. Um, it's organic, 100% organic. It's nice and soft and fluffy. Um, and yeah, I'm going to be sewing the Ziggy hoodie by Wardrobe by Me. And I will link to that in, in the down bar and show you on the side what it looks like. Um, but it's just a simple hoodie pattern. I, he loves wearing hoodies, you know, in the fall and the winter. So I feel like a black one he doesn't have in his wardrobe. He could get a lot of use out of it. So, and I also purchased a, another denim, uh, separate, this pattern calls for a separating zipper. Um, and again, it's like, it's just like a denim zipper, except with a separating zipper, it's one of those coat zippers where they open and close from either side of the zipper ends. So if that makes sense, but yeah, he's going to get, he's going to get a hoodie from me. I can, I can crank one of those out in a day. So I hope, I hope that will be a peace offering to him <laughs> in some form. Um, but anyway, so that is my plan for the weekend, hopefully. Um, and I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, there's some other other patterns that I want to whip up for myself um, just as far for the, the make along. Uh, and then there is something else that I, I'm super, super stoked to share with you guys. Uh, while I was away uh, in Cape Cod, Dennis uh, had gone off on a bike ride and uh, I took a walk over to the local antique shop. Uh, there's an antique shop like literally right around the corner from uh, where the house is. And I love this place so much. Every year I go and I either come away with something like um, either teacups or little knickknacks that I don't know, I love. So, um, but this one I've, I've been going up to the Cape for, I want to say like 10 years now, which is crazy sauce, but, um, this has been staring at me ever since I laid eyes on it every year. Um, and it's still, it was still hanging there and I pulled it down from the hook and I just held it and I walked around with it and it just, it followed me home. Yes. So this is a Victorian bodice. I want to say, or it was part, I think it was, it, this must have been part of a dress, but it, the tag says Victorian. I, I know I'm no fashion historian. I probably need someone like Amber Bouchart to come investigate this dress to see what the deal is. Um, if you're watching Amber, please contact me. I would love to hear from you. <laughs> you're totally not watching me. Um, but anyway, it, this is just a really beautiful bodice. It has, um, this, I don't know if it's crepe or it's some kind of like black lace. Um, I, I feel terrible at handling it like this, but anyway, uh, it's, it's been hanging out for years in, in an antique shop. So it's, it's, it's come this far. What's, what's a little hand, like human hand handling. I don't know, whatever you want to call it, but it came with this detachable, uh, collar. I'm not quite sure how it goes, but, um, but yeah, again, like I think it had a, a dress attached to it and they just cut it off. Um, and I've just been like ogling all the gorgeous details. Uh, this is completely hand sewn. I'm going to take this off and put that there for a second, but it has hook and eye closures in the back, but it has all these gathers in the front and over here. Yeah, it was completely hand sewn. You can totally see that. Um, and then on the inside is where I start to geek out because look at that guys. No surging. This is all hand stitched inside. It's so incredible. Um, I'll turn. Yeah. 
So yeah, you can see right here, there's all hand stitching up along there. Um, and talk about, again, like no surging whatsoever. This is pretty much the equivalent to pinking shears. So the if you don't have a serger, patterns will say you can either zigzag stitch or use pinking shears. I don't know what kind of scissors they did, uh, but it's like a scalloped edge. So they either, you know, had special scissors to create these scallops, but um, they might just be actual scissors. Yeah, I think that some of them are uneven. No, wait, yeah, some. I think these were all just like hand pinked, if that makes sense. Um, but it's just so beautiful. Uh, there, there's no boning in it at all, but uh, I will, um, I will endeavor to take some detailed photos and put it up on my blog, the peculiar stitch. But yeah, I will I will try and take some more photos of that so you guys can see it in full detail, but it's it just makes me so happy to look at it. Um, I'm not planning to wear it because it's it's an antique and they say you should never wear or put on um, an antique garment. I don't know, maybe if I wore a chemise under it to protect, you know, you know, whatever. Anyway, to protect protect it from my elements, if that makes any sense. But um, I I actually got it. It was listed for uh, fifty dollars, believe it or not. Um, so I, I tried talking them down to forty, but we settled on forty five dollars, which I think is a you know. I, I thought it was worth it just for the fact, you know, for me to actually study a garment, an extant garment uh, from Victorian from the Victorian era in detail, and it just. Guys, I just get so excited over this stuff. I don't know if you can tell, but um, yeah. So I thought it'd be fun to share that with you um, and the like. So anyway, uh, I think I think that is it for the content of the episode. Uh, I am gonna move, move along to the blather segment where I chat about what's been happening in my life. So do you care to stick around? Uh, but first, just a little heads up about my shop update. Uh, Friday, August 23rd at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Again, this will be an update solely for kits for this old don't know uh, crop kit. You've, you've been asking me to have more kits in the shop. So ask and thou shall receive. Uh, there will be more Sol Dotna crop kits in the shop uh, on Friday, which is probably when you're watching this. So again, if you want to be informed about what will be uh, in each update, uh, definitely subscribe to my newsletter. Uh, you can go over at, to villainvineyarns.com, click on the newsletter link, enter your info, and every week, usually at the end of every Thursday, I send out a newsletter with all the details, letting you know about bases, colorways, and other news surrounding Bull and Vine Yarns. So, uh, you know, thank you again to those who do, sub who do subscribe. Um, and I hope you can make the update. Um, so yeah, all right, blather, blather, blather. Uh, what's been going on? Dennis and I went to Cape Cod. It was awesome, we brought Bella. Um, and yeah, we just had, it was a really, really nice relaxing time. Uh, I think, nor you know how I, I always complain about the beach, like I'm not a beach person, I can't stand the beach. I think it's mainly because I can't stand the beach crowd and the crazy hassle and hustle to get to the beach before everyone else does to snag a spot, the heat and everything. Uh, this time we did something different. Uh, we took our time in the morning, which was really nice. I just hung out knit for the whole morning. Uh, Dennis did his thing. He went for bike rides and then came back, did lunch. And then we, and then we went to the beach and you guys, I can't tell you how nice it is to go to the beach at the end of the day, as opposed to like first thing in the morning, because everyone else is heading out. The sun is, you know, past, you know, it, it's high point, you know, around three o'clock it's, you know, the sun's starting to set. Um, and it's just so much, chill so much more chill i don't know i can't describe it but i i think you know going forward if we go to the beach it's just gonna be towards the end of the day because that's when i like going to the beach i don't know about you guys but yeah the morning is it's just too crazy for me but um but yeah so yay we had fun there um we ate lots of seafood i i I, I love seafood like that's my favorite thing about going to cape cod i think just the seafood is just so good um and i'm trying to think what else do we do yeah, it, we just relaxed. Bella came with us, as I said. Um, we did take her to the vet and, you know, they they prescribed her some medication to just chill her out for the car ride because last year she didn't do too well. Um, but this time she was completely fine. Uh, giving her the medicine, on the other hand, was not fun. Uh, but at the same time, it just chilled her out for the entire ride and she was fine and happy. And once she was at the house, she was, she was, having a blast. So, you know, I think it was a vacation just as much for her as it was for us. Um, 
So yeah, that was that. And then I'm trying to think what else, what else? Uh, last weekend I met up with Gabby and Gabby of Once Upon a Corgi and Tanya from the Knitting Spring podcast. We got together, had some lunch. It was so much fun, you guys. Uh, we just chilled, hung out, knit, drank rosé and wine and yeah, it was just, it was a blast. So really great getting to see them and catching up and, and the like, and I'm trying to think what else. <sighs> just trying to stay cool. You guys, I, summer used to be my favorite, favorite season because I guess I didn't have to go to school or <laughs> what have you. It was just a kind of like vacation time. But honestly, I'm so over this heat. I'm so over it, you guys. And there's fluff, a giant fluff ball in my eye. I apologize. But anyway, I'm gonna end things there. Thank you, thank you so much as always for hanging out with me. If you enjoyed this episode, please feel free to like and subscribe below. I try to put out an episode every Friday for your viewing pleasure, so definitely check it out. So anyway, um, that said, happy knitting and I will see you next time. Bye!